there are many different motivations to play. Some people play video games for the story, whereas some play them in a more competitive setting with the goal to beat the opposition. Higher motivation in competitiveness correlates positively with the skill level in esports. While playing esports games, the players can experience high self-esteem, accomplishment, and social recognition. The main elements to attract players for the gaming career are argued to be the celebration of mastery of skills, the pursuit of self-improvement, and importance of fairness, equality, and mutual respect. Esports activities are serious, but fun, and can thus be seen as self-motivating. When the first esports game is found, the first games are played, the gaming is um, quite casual, fun, leisure activity. Um, And initial perceptions in the social world of esports are formed and the player may feel a sense of belonging in the esports community. Some gaming communities are more accepting than others, and some people may feel the need to be accepted more than others. If the player doesn't feel accepted, um, he might quit the game already in the early stages. The journey of an esports player can be divided into different stages, as Kim and Thomas did in their research. The five stages identified are enjoying stage, struggling stage, achieving stage, slumping stage, and recovery stage. We will go through what these different stages mean from the perspective of an esports player. Enjoying stage is where the player is still inexperienced and solving game-related tasks that are new. At this stage, as you are new to the game, you do not put too much emphasis on success in gameplay, and you have much lower expectations yourself. In the struggling stage, the player has improved skills, but are losing their enjoyment of the game or gaming. Feelings such as gaming is a waste of time or that you should be better than you are are common at this stage. If the player overcomes the struggling stage, they enter the achieving stage. And at this stage, a certain competency has been developed and the enjoyment of gaming is found again. After the achieving stage, some players may end up into the slumping stage in which the player has failed to maintain this kind of achieving achieving stage and no longer has the professional capacity to play. All the satisfaction and glory experienced earlier are gone. And after this, the player may quit or enter the recovery stage in which the slump is overcome and reformation happens. Just like games, players have different stages and some of them are easier to pass than others. Due to the high competitiveness of esports, certain mental skills are required to achieve optimal performance. According to Himmelstein's study, certain claims were given regarding successful performances in esports. These claims can apply not only to esports, but to other aspects in life as well. Naturally, you need to have a great knowledge about the game in question. You also need to think strategically and make fast and smart decisions. Going forward and staying motivated is important, and dwelling in the past may lead to uncertainty. Focus is important, and separating daily life from in-game performance is important. If there is harassment, it is important to cope with it adaptively. This can relate to muting some players in-game, for example. Maintaining positive attitude is hard sometimes, but for a successful performance, it is important. Warming up physically and mentally is a great way to start the games on the right foot. For optimal performance, adapting to your opponents is important. Just like in chess, focus should be on outplaying the enemy and not doing the same things uh, repeatedly. Even though starting with an autopilot mode might work in the beginning, if the opponent adapts well, they have the upper hand. Talking and communicating with the team is of utmost importance and helps in being proactive. A player should also have trust in their own skills. Lack of self-confidence may have a big impact.
This takes us to barriers for optimal gameplay. Barriers may include confidence issues, inadequate or bad coping strategies with anxiety, haunting of bad achievements or mistakes, so-called misplays, harassment, lack of self and team development, or difficulty in separating gaming from real life. Every player should identify the biggest barriers on a personal level to take them down. Sometimes a player may suffer from psychological problems, which can relate to negative impacts of excessive gaming. The activity of playing may feel like work and may be addictive and nullifies the concept of free activity. Players also face stress during practice and competition, especially if they must perform. Excessive gaming can negatively impact performances in-game as well as psychological well-being and daily life. Arguably, anything excessive is bad for you. Ooh. Well done, Ludi. 